Good morning everyone and welcome to another live coding session. Let's share the link and get everyone on board and then we can start coding. Do, 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 do. All right. Okay. Do, do, do. I need a um how do you call those an intro kind of music video before I start. Okay. Checking in. Hello, Sudo. How are you? Mr. Chris. Is Chris? I think it's Chris, right? Cyrus. I don't know why I'm confused. Hmm. Well, how are you today? Okay, let's go to Excalibur. And... <laughs> hey, good morning. Technically bolt. Good, good. I'm... Uh... I'm okay. I woke up kind of early at 6 a.m. and I tried to take another nap before the stream, but that didn't work out. So I just was like, hey, you know what? Let's just go live. We'll see how it goes. I hope my brain will not fail me because what I want to build today is going to be hard. There are lots of pieces I don't know. Uh, I think, yeah, we can remove this. Can we clean it up? Reset, yes. I have it in a stream or something. Hey, Hamza. Consistency is key. I plan to stream soon. Yeah, that's, so honestly, that's what I'm trying to see how it works. Um, This is, I think, the sixth stream. I, I plan to stream every day, Monday to Friday, to see how it works for a month or so. Uh, and also this is like a practice for me to learn how to build stuff and at the same time learn how to create content. So it's kind of a win-win. And also people watching, they learn. Hopefully, that's the goal. <laughs> so yeah, it's a win-win-win-win-win-win-win for everyone. Okay. Hey, Jawed, how are you? My dear. Yeah, okay. So, uh, we had the plan for the project yesterday. Although I I built it in a in another tab, so that's gone. So we'll have to recreate it. <laughs> but it's good. It's good. We'll come with a fresh mind and we'll see how that goes. Uh, yeah, let me see. Because we'll have to break it down. It's not, it won't seem like a complex project. But yeah, it, it has a lot of pieces and it might, yeah, may, might take a while. Hi, teacher. <laughs> hey, Hassan. I'm not a teacher. I'm just trying. I, you, you can see it as I'm learning and I share it with you. So we're learning together. This could be sort of like a um, programming. How do you call those? A, 
Uh, I forgot. A co-programming... Bear programming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Ivan. How are you, buddy? Why are you not the mod on YouTube? What happened? Yeah, so pair programming. Something like that. Although I'm... Yeah. I love... Hi. Wait. No, no. <laughs> what did you do? This is my work account. <laughs> Why are you using your work account? I love programming. Yeah, me too. Oh, I'm out of water. Yeah, just a second. I have my... Let me show you. Hey, Drumel. I'm good. Let me show you my stack of water. Where is it? Look. There. <laughs> like, people would kill me, but yeah. I tried... Uh, I tried having tap water with a filter, but it, it didn't work. So, we want Next.js 14. Yeah. Did you say my name? Yes. Hello, Adrian. Okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah. By the way, let me take the one. I should get a uh, a water company to sponsor the streams because I drink so much water. Uh, do you set up a whole different user on a Mac just for streaming? Uh, no, <laughs> I should though. That's a good idea. Yeah, I, I don't do a very good job, although like I could probably reveal my email, my phone number, some passwords, I guess. Uh, but yeah, not much else. And probably the environmental variables on iCodeS. But I'm not working that much on iCodeS, so yeah. So the pop sponsors this stream. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah, go leak. Yeah, that could could be fun. Thank you for the follow, Topzor. Hi, John. Mayor, how are you? So, by the way, um, I think this week I'm going to continue to stream in the morning. So, around this time. But starting next week, I want to switch to afternoon. I want to see how that goes. The only drawback is I might not have that much energy, although I'll try to take a nap before it, so we'll see. What time is it for me? It's 9.30 a.m. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'm good, Mayor. How are you? I'm trying to... Uh, prepare for this is going to be a fun one but also like by fun I mean a tough one 8 30 p.m. here almost Wednesday whoa you're in uh, New Zealand right wow yeah so if I stream afternoon I mean I guess you could that will be in what three seven hour yeah It'll be like 3 a.m. for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let let me know. Let me know some uh, numbers of uh, the lottery. <laughs> well, where can we use callback functions? Can you one example? Can I give one example? Oh uh, yeah, so like. Uh, a callback function is, for example, on the map function uh, for on the race. 
oh, you pass in a callback function which has whatever parameters you set. <laughs> Good one, Mohamed. Okay. So let us start to kind of plan the project because that's that's what I like to do. <laughs> that's awesome, Sudo, thank you very much. And look at that. You you got Chris a subscription. <laughs> hey Chris. Thank you, Sudo, for donating. For gifting a subscription. I appreciate it. Andrew is in Romania. Which Andrew? Oh, that that guy. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sudo. Look, you're number two on the gifted subs. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the follow, Genji. Or it Yenji. My bad. Oh. <laughs> All right, so the basic idea of the project we're going to build today is a multiplayer shooting game. That, that sounds fancy, you know, it sounds very, very fancy, but it's like not actually like that fancy. <laughs> uh, if we manage to build this, we'll have a, a solid uh, understanding of how to work with Canvas, how to work with sockets, how to send events from server to client, um, some physics, because we have to, to figure out, okay, which direction should the bullet go? Uh, we should be learning some OOP, although apparently in JavaScript you don't have that. So yeah, we should be learning a few things. But the gist of the game, this is the canvas, this is the browser. Uh, it's, let me see, four, yeah. Oops. So we have the players. Player one. And then we have another player, player two. And they are both navigating on the screen. And they can shoot bullets. So let's say this player shoots a bullet that goes on this tra trajectory. And the bullet is like here or something. Um, boom, 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 like that. See? So, that's kind of the idea of the game. And you can navigate, so you can go that way or that way. What's the arrow? One, okay. Or that way, and this can go that way or that way, you know? So you can avoid the bullets and stuff. We'll have to figure out like what's the speed of the bullet and all the fancy things, you know, it's not going to be easy, but like this is kind of the gist of it. And of course we can then go on and add a leaderboard. So here we can say leader. Come on, come on, come on. Leaderboard and I want this to be Purple, of course. See, we can have a leaderboard and all that fuss. All that fuss. <laughs> Thank you for the follow, black people. Uh, let's see the chat. So, question. There's a bug on Ico this with Tailwind CSS not working. Uh, give us more details. How it's How is it not working? What you're trying to accomplish? Coding Malita, I am new. Hello. And welcome to the stream. I hope you'll enjoy. 
yeah, so this is kind of the the idea. And let's see. Okay, so the to do's, as we mentioned yesterday as well, but I, well, I lost it. Can I zoom in? Okay, okay, good. So, that, or maybe not to do's, but more like functionalities. Function, functionalities um, would be something like user can move around in the canvas with uh, we can use W S A D or arrows user can shoot bullets now here we need to figure out like what's the distance it can travel because if it goes out of the boundaries we can well we should like delete it and yeah i think the first step would be to actually create the game but only in the canvas like only the local part, the client side. So we create a canvas and we draw rect uh, well circles and we make it so that we can move the circle with the arrows or uh, W sad. <laughs> Thank you for the follow. Uh, how's that? And then once we have that, we can also all right, let's let's have a to do. To do step by step. W sad, yeah. <laughs> very sad. That's like from very very sad. Uh, so draw a circle in a canvas. To do ask GPT. Ooh, yeah, we can do that. Damn. We need to move circle on the press, which means that redraw circle in new position. Philip, good morning. How are you? Uh, yeah. So move circle on key press, redraw circle in new position. All right, and then. Uh, shoot, is it shoot like this? I think, yeah, that's shot, shoot, shoot a bullet, fire, uh, shoot another circle, another, well, shoot a bullet on mouse press, and then, uh, calculate the direction based on mouse position. I think this seems about right, right? Uh, okay, so we draw a circle on the canvas, move the circle on key press, redraw the circle because like that's how canvas work. Uh, you basically uh, draw something on it and then if you want to like make something move, you basically redraw it and you move things around. And then yeah, uh, you'll see. I have done this a bunch of times in the past, but I haven't done it in a while. So, you know, you, you forget things, but we'll figure it out, right? We should be able to do that. If we did it once, we should be able to do it again. All right, good. And of course, like in the future, this will be maybe to do something like phase one. Are you using plain JavaScript or a game framework? I want to use plain JavaScript because I don't know, I'm the dummy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know why. Probably because I don't want to learn a framework from scratch right now. Although I've used, I, well, I used P5.js. I built a bunch of things on P5.js from um, 
coding train from from his tutorials but I, again i haven't used that in years uh, how to join discord uh you can you have a discord command you can use discord like this okay oh uh, yeah so i use p5js and i i think i used box2d and some other library i forgot but yeah i've used and definitely they do this they do this for you but let, let's do this let's do it on our own in canvas try to see uh how it works and then we can maybe in another stream look at how to you to build the same thing with a framework uh yeah better to use JavaScript because people watch our beginners uh yeah that too and also like i like to learn things you know and learn start from the basics because i feel like if you learn the basics then if you use a library, it's, you, you learn it faster because you already understand the basics and how they're built on top of it, sort of, if it makes sense. Uh, you used Kaboom a few times, super easy. Check out some of their examples. Okay, so that's Kaboom. I bet there are a lot of uh, libraries which can do that. All right, good. So this is to do phase one. And let's also try to figure out phase two. So basically draw a circle, move circle on key press, redraw circle, shoot a bullet on mouse, press calculate direction based mouse. And also uh, let's do it. So remove bullet if out of canvas. This is the, the part I'm not, I don't know how to figure out because we have a canvas, we can make it to be full width and height, but if we make it the multiplier game, my width and height of the browser will be different than yours. So we'll have to figure out some kind of a invisible world or something where we can move and then others get spawned into the world. And yeah. All right, let me do phase two will be the socket io phase so basically set up a server with socket io um, on user login ask for username store username in a player array what's that oh okay Uh, doesn't like something or username sure, sure, sure. leave me alone uh, okay then broadcast broadcast all players this will have to do hmm, we'll have to do a game loop of some sort have a game loop that runs every frame something We'll have to figure out the frame and here uh, broadcast players position and uh, from client from client uh whenever they move send new position yeah this will be a fun one definitely very fun one to do uh oops sorry okay this is what I wrote. I keep forgetting to get my face out of it. No, thank you. Uh, do not disturb. Okay. Uh, good morning, Christian. How are you? 
Hi, how to beat the programming coding logic? I'm not sure what you mean. Are you uh, gonna be hosting this publicly? Yeah, that's the goal. Uh, we'll probably putting it on railway. Uh, I'm very curious to see. Let's let me see the usage. Hmm. Yeah, so so far uh, that project I launched cost me four cents. <laughs> this uh, online math game. Did people already break it? No, it's okay. But look at that, 80 people logged in. That's nice. Lots of people. Okay. Good. So, uh, I think we have what we need, like uh, at least the the idea of it hey frank how are you good morning yeah we should be good to go we'll have to learn a bunch of things but, well at least i have to learn maybe you already know uh but hey well we'll learn together we'll figure things out and we can also ask gpt no problem so uh let me go i think i have yeah work folder here and i made this name circle shooter i don't know uh question should i switch to linux for coding i don't know nothing about linux just heard it's cool i don't I, honestly i for me it doesn't matter what you code on just as long as you code Okay, so circle shooter, let's call it something else, like uh, I shoot circles. <laughs> Sweet. Come on. Okay, and we open this in VS Code and we'll get started. So, uh... Let me think because we need the front end. So the client and then we need the server. So I could like just go away and create a new folder inside. Yeah, uh, let's call it client. Freak, sup, sup, sup. And here we have index.html, uh, probably not a lot of CSS and then uh, index. Well, let's call it script JS. How do I navigate here? Is it there a command? Like this? Yeah, nice. Cool. I like that. Good. So index here. Let me zoom in so you can see. And also we can. What was there? Uh, we can run this and we can move it here. Uh, wait, like this. I'm a bit slow today because I woke up a bit too early. So yeah, you'll see me struggle a little bit. Uh, I shoot circles <laughs> and circles are other players. So that's fun part about it. All right. If I save, it's updated. Good. And in the body, I'm going to add the script. So script source script JS. And then here we'll have a canvas with a canvas with an idea of a canvas, very original, like that. And yeah, let's add a CSS style. Style the CSS, just so that we can do basic styling, I guess. A uh, link styles CSS, and inside it, let's do margin zero. Uh, let's go just on the body. Body margin zero and canvas. Uh, border one pixel solid. We'll do it white. And then the margin would do BG black. All right. 
Something like this for now. Little Poppy making little JavaScript games. Yeah! <laughs> That's a very interesting idea, Sudo. A game with real consequences. You log in with your Twitter and every time you lose, you randomly block one of your followers. <laughs> hey Smith, how are you? What is Marquee, Marque, by the way? Uh, Marquee? Ah, sounds familiar. I, I think I should know that. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Can we make this width 100% and height 100 people tights? Yeah, we can. Okay, I like that. Uh, although, yeah, we have border. I, I guess I should do 100 people uh, viewport heights, viewport widths, right? And then let's have this, uh, where we set box sizing. I haven't done this in a long time. So we still have some margin stuff or padding on the bot body. Ah, what's happening? Margin zero. Box sizing border box. Why do we have the scrolling? What's wrong with you? Sneaker. Yeah, so. Something's wrong there. I don't know what. Box sizing border box. Background margin padding. Uh, what's your thought on Bootstrap 5? Haven't used it. I like Tailwind more. If I remove the border... Yeah, I still have the scrolling. So... What's up with that? Okay... Viewport Heights, apparently it's wrong with that. Thank you for the follow, Erised. Okay. Du, du, du. Before or after should have border box zero. Also before and after? Do you think... Yeah, I was thinking about that, but... Let's see. Before... After... See, it still has... And margin zero. Mm, I'm not sure I want to do that on all. See? No, it's something with the viewport height. So, I guess... I could do 100% and also... Uh, uh, min height 100 foot heights. Do, 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 do. Going back to the basics. Could do a trick of like calc 100 viewport heights minus two pixel one pixels, or I guess it's two pixels of the border. No, that's weird. Something's off. See, real struggle. Four pixels. All right, fair. Put the height 100 viewport heights on body and in the canvas 100%. Yeah, I'd write that as well. HTML body 100%, canvas height 100%. Hell nah, bro struggling with CSS in 2000, 2024. Yeah, that's right. Overflow hidden. That could work. I use star outline 1 pixel solid red to see everything. Yeah, it's because of... Um, 
of the, the canvas doing some sort of magic. All right, good. We'll leave it like this. It's a weird, weird thing happening with viewport height. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, solving, struggling with CSS normal. Exactly. That's why I usually use Tailwind. They kind of do the resets for you, so you don't have to worry about stuff like this, you know? So yeah, use a framework, don't do it from scratch, I guess, most times. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. So, now... Uh... No, it's a scroll bar issue with the age don't respond to flexibility to them. Yeah. All right, let's see. How do we work with canvas? Let's look. Uh, draw circle on canvas. Go back to this, to the basics. So we get a canvas, we create a context, and then we begin path. This is how you draw a circle. Whoa, that's tough. To draw a circle on canvas, use the following methods. Okay. Doesn't canvas have like a, um, a circle method? You have to, to do it with an arc. Ooh. Okay, I guess. So you put X, Y, the radius, the start position and the end position of the arc. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. And then you use stroke and fill method to draw the path. Create the circle start angle zero and angle two, two pi. Yeah. Already starting out well. <laughs> Thank you for the follow, look. Uh, Lucas. All right. So yeah, these are the parameters for the arc. By the way, let me zoom in a bit so you can see. So we have the X and Y positions, the radius, the starting angle, and the end angle. And because 2 pi is like making a full circle, something, something. Well, we'll use that. Okay. Good. And I guess we could uh, convert this to kind of our own function, but let's see it in action here. And I want instead of my canvas, this will be canvas. Okay. And stroke, probably stroke is black. So can I set stroke? Thank you for the follow, Milk. Uh, what are you building? We're trying to build a JavaScript game where you have a circle, you're a circle moving around and you can shoot other circles. That's kind of the basics of it. All right, let's see, how do we Use the stroke, stroke style, red. Okay, yeah. If I say context, that stroke style will be white. I guess I can uh, put the stroke style anywhere. We're not seeing the circle. Where's my circle? Someone stole the circle. Come on, circle. So we get it. Canvas, we connected the strip. Ah. Console.log script. Okay, script is working. We begin the path. We create an arc. We have a stroke color. So what's wrong? Hello! Hello, I have seen you on TikTok. Someone upload your video spelling word he mentioned you too. Funny. Uh, you have to close the path. Oh. Okay, see? That's why it, it, it's good to have 
smart people around you. So we we're back here. Huh? It doesn't say so. That's not a good tutorial. Okay. Context and path. Not a function. Okay. Ask GPT. The color is wrong. Do you realize like we're struggling to to draw a circle? Imagine how much it will be. Uh Yes, one F is missing. Oh, hey, look at that. <laughs> and we don't need the end fat. Okay. But what's wrong with this though? It's the canvas squeezed. <laughs> okay. So I guess we can't do this. Also, what's wrong with, it's not very, very good. Huh. It, it feels like it's blurry. Yeah, just the character missing everything breaks. That's that's coding. That's the fun of coding. But yeah. Does it, it does it like it better with white? No. It's very blurry. Why is it blurry? You should close the path though. But how? Close, I don't have. Let's see. All right, you know what? I'm going to go to the master of them all. Let's, let's see. Arc, so creates an arc, blah, 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 blah. Begin part arc. See, they, they're not closing the path. It's weird. Uh, different shape demonstrations. Okay, so they're beginning the path and then fill. Stroke. We could fill it. Will it work just to fill? I guess I need the fill fill style yeah but it's blurry i don't like it's blurry <laughs> yeah uh ttx translate 0 0.5 0 0.5 apparently makes the canvas clear let's see ttx translate but isn't it that like translating and I guess I need to put it here. Ooh. Yeah, it makes it a bit clearer. See? Compared to this. Uh, seems that if you set the HTML uh, element on the... Oh, probably it's blurry because we also have the width. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. It's not as blurry, you're right. But then, all right, can I, let's see, canvas.wet will be a uh, window.inner width and canvas.height will be window.inner height. Like that. Okay. Um, yeah, we we'll kind of have to figure out now why we have scroll issue, but okay. So now we don't need that anymore and it's kind of okay, I suppose. Yeah, it's still weird that we have those margin things, margin zero, adding zero. Nothing wants to remove my my stupid scrolls. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Weird though. Hmm. A 
Okay, so canvas width is window inner width times window device pixel ratio. Maybe that's why it's blurry for me because I'm on a Mac. Let's see. Thanks, chat. Okay, I think that's better. Let me put minus 10. I want to get rid of that stupid scroll. And we'll figure out how to make it full screen. Hey! Something's off. Let's see. Do, 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 do. So canvas computed. Weight is eight fifty two and height is one thousand three hundred and thirty eight. Uh That's super weird. The weight and height here are changing, but... Huh. It says that display inline. Display block. Okay. No, stop. You don't want to scrap. <laughs> I, I was just testing to see, like, why is it full weight, uh, full height, but... It's, yeah, still weird. Look. Wow. But it's like super big now. So are you sure we need window device pixel ratio? Please, chat GPT. You have to this time, okay. The style lines I sent to. Okay. So here. And the width to width. And height to height. Oh boy. Nah. Inner width times device pixel ratio and inner height device pixel ratio. Isn't it this one as well here? It feels like it's double the size now. Can you send me the TikTok video as well? Uh, now you can do CTX scale. No, put it back. <laughs> I don't remember this being so hard when I was doing stuff like this. Okay, okay, I'll do that. Okay, so it's it seems scaled now. But still, do you see? It's so much bigger. It's double in size. So something's wrong. No, put it back. Okay. I'm waiting to see. I, this is over my head. So, yeah. Did you set the canvas style? Inspect the element. So yeah, it's at 872 pixels and 1300 and so. It's high DPI support for retina displays. Yeah, I get that. Uh, 
but remove the line five. Now, if we remove multiplication, that that's the point of having the uh, device pixel ratio. <laughs> Look at the style weight and not the actual weight. What's the difference? Yeah, the multiplication should be there. Damn it. It's hard. Do, 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 do. All right, let's go to ChatGPT. Let's ask him uh, in JavaScript Canvas how to draw a circle while also preserving device pixel ratio. Hi, foreign bro. Okay. So device picture ratio is a window property that gives you the device to show the resolution in physical pixels. This is for Apple devices. Here's a step-by-step -step guide on how to... Okay. Okay. Window, device, pixel ratio, or one. And then canvas, we set the size, display size. Apparently, we need plus pixel. Let's see, that was missing. <laughs> hey, Raiders! Thank you very much for raiding. Matisse, thank you. Hello, everyone. How are you today? I sense Romania. Yeah. <laughs> it's a stupid Romania. I'm trying to figure out how to... Uh, found another life code I had to rate. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. How was your stream? So yeah, basically right now I'm trying to figure out why the canvas we're trying to build a game on is not looking the way I want it to look. We were making AI emotes. Ooh, that's fun. You've done a lot of canvas. Yeah, I believe it. <laughs> I just, yeah, this is a bit over my head. I, I never had to deal with uh, device pixelation stuff. All right. So see this adding pixels that helped. We're still having a, a bit of trouble there, but it's, it's almost perfect. The Florian Pop emote. The browser is, isn't zoomed in. <laughs> That was it, damn it. The browser was zoomed in. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright. So that way it didn't that's why it didn't work. Because I zoomed in. So you can see. And then I forgot. Okay. Uh so now if we don't scale it back, it should be good. Thanks, Sudo. That was all. <laughs> what? What's that? Yeah, that's why we love programming. It's just crazy sometimes. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, exactly. It it's crazy. It's crazy how you can you can uh, just forget one thing and that, that just ruins everything, you know? <laughs> Alright, I still don't like that we have the scroll for some reason. Uh, yeah, bunch of messages in the chat. I barely can keep up. Thank you again for the rate. Alright, so... Apparently this doesn't do much anyway. 
Because, oh, it's not... Hmm. Okay. I don't like that we have the the scrolling issue. Alright, we, we still have it. That's weird. Can I maybe just subtract a bit from this? 5 pixels? Just so I can get rid of the scroll. Alright, good. I'm happy with this. No, that's not right. <laughs> Rollboard default map. <laughs> uh, what game is this? Asks Hans. Uh, we're trying to build a game where we move a circle in the screen, on the screen, in the canvas, and you can shoot things. So basically here is uh, the gist of it. Let me zoom out. So you can see, let me move it here until... <laughs> yeah. So basically this is the idea. You have player 1 and player 2. Also this should be a multiplayer game at some point. But for, for the first phase we have to figure out how to draw things on the canvas. And then how to shoot things from, well, from the circle towards the direction of the mouse. And then we're going to use Socket.io to, well, have multiple people be able to uh, join and play together. Something like that. That's, that's the basics of the game. And also we're learning stuff as we go, as you can see. All right. So, uh, okay. HTML body border zero margin zero pixels. All right. I removed the minus five. I'll trust you because you helped a lot. So, body and HTML. The learning is the best part. Yeah, it is. It, you might look dumb for a good part, but yeah, it definitely is. Uh, so border zero margin, but we should have border on here. See, it's not the border and the margin. Uh, yeah, I was thinking the border is because of uh, the mar the scroll is because of the border, but it's not. It's probably yeah. I don't know why, honestly, because we're setting the width to be the inner width, so it's not going over. Uh, I have a space here. Yeah, I don't think that matters. So yeah, it's weird. <laughs> yeah. It should have worked. Try padding and margin zero on the canvas. Uh, yeah. So border, with the, we can move this to all elements. See? So we're still having an extra pixel or two. Let's actually figure out how much we have. So I put five here. Let's see. Will it, will it be solved with two? No. Three. By the way, let me do this. Four. Okay, with four works, three doesn't work. So we have four extra pixels from somewhere. Uh, body web scripts, uh, web web kit scroll bar display none. I mean, we could do that. I just I want to figure out why we have the four the extra four pixels. Where are they coming from? Oh, okay, we have the border, but but the border should be inside because uh, because <laughs> because we have box sizing border box, so it should be included in the element, right? That's that's the weird part. So yeah, uh, let me just leave leave this like this for now. Because we have like many things to do, and well, uh, I'll, I'll save this to uh, something like error size, error browser size. I don't know. Just so we know that okay, this is weird, <laughs> and we subtract that from here, and we should be gold. Okay, good. Now. Uh, I want to make, let's see, what we, we need to make a lot of things. And we struggled for an hour to build a circle. See, that's 
it's been an hour. How is it going? Yeah, exactly. Not good. Uh, we need to start for canvas weight as well. Or it will distort. Uh, you mean here? And I do the subtraction before I multiply, right? So minus error browser size. Okay, good. I, I could see that something changed there, so that's good. All right. Now, let me create a function draw circle. And we'll set the X, Y, and radius. And here we're going to basically do this, right? Because this way we can draw circles how many we want. We could do something like window, inner height, uh, no, inner width divided by two, window, inner height, divided by two, and we want 50 radius. Draw a circle. Oh, and we have to use it, right? <laughs> X, Y, R, and like that. Yeah, perfect. See, now we have a circle in the middle of the screen. Uh, so you want, you might want to do device pixel ratio one. Yeah, as we had on GPT. Okay, sure, we'll do that. Uh, device pixel ratio will be this. Or one. And then we'll need to use to apply this everywhere. Okay. What happens if we don't scale now? It doesn't seem to happen. Yeah. All right, good. Now, uh, let me move the circle when we press something. So how do we do that? We're going to add a key press a key event on the window, right? Window dot add event listener. And we want key down, key press, key up. I think it's key press. And we need to see which key is pressed. So console.log e dot key, I think it is. Let's see. Okay, so we're pressing S, A, okay, good. Wow, it, it, it even works with capital letters. Nice. All right. So, uh, now this is the trick. We will need to create a game loop that redraws the canvas every whatever seconds. Well, not, actually not seconds, milliseconds, sorry. And whenever we press a key we would need to change the position of our circle so let's start by uh, doing w so if e dot key is w i wonder if it works with if we have a caps lock on then uh do, 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 i'm thinking we will need to inc to decrease the y position of our circle so let's create a circle and i don't like we have so much code here we have a scale there are circle let's have a function game loop that will run every whatever seconds
don't loop or use time for the intervals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to use request animation frame. Yeah. So we'll have a game loop, and at the end we use request animation frame, and we'll use the game loop again. That way it's more optimized and stuff like that. And the game loop will start the game here. So basically this will start the game like that. And let's console.log loops and we can keep track of it. Loops is zero. Just for our for our thingy. Also let's uh, write canvas sizing stuff and then game stuff okay just some comments for feature use and then drawing stuff like that and then here will be event stuff lots of stuff in our code all right good so we do that we have the loops all right good so oops sorry We'll do cons. Uh, let's do loops plus plus here. So we have like that. We now know how many loops we have, just for testing purposes. Uh, if you change the scale later, it will affect the DPI calculations. All right, makes sure. makes sense. Uh, okay, so it works. The game loop calls itself as fast as it can due to the request animation frame thingy, right? Right. Now, uh, well, actually I'll leave this, not even sure. Uh, because we can, we saw it work, so I'll remove it for now. Okay, now here in the game loop, we want to redraw or we want to draw not circle, we want to draw canvas, right? And because in the game loop, we might also probably might update stuff and then we'll draw stuff. So function draw canvas. Now this is where I'll need to see what was, there was a function that would uh, res reset how do I create a game loop that redraws the canvas? Let me see. There was something I forgot. It's a rect, clear rect or something like that. Maybe I'm wrong. Well, wait and see. Set the state variables last time. Other game iterations. Update delta time. Uh, Okay, define the draw functions. This function draws the game state to the canvas. Come on, GPT, move faster. Okay, so it's clear rect, and we say the x and y and the size. All right, good, 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 good. I, I, it's enough. I know. Thank you for the follow, Kazdro. Okay, so that's. That's what I wanted to know, the clear, this, basically this one. Because initially we're going to clear rect, and then we're going to, we have the circle, but uh, I want this circle to be an object which has position and which position we're going to move around. Ooh, that sounds fancy, Sid. Very nice. Uh, so... Let me see if I still remember doing this. I haven't done it in a while. So, player stuff. We're going to... Have a class of player. And how do you initialize stuff? We put X and Y. I think. And then this, uh, I forgot. Let me, um, how do I create a player class which has position X and Y? Hello, Tare Blackbird. I sent her the div today. <laughs> yeah. Okay, 
So we have a class of player and constructor. Okay, and we move and we draw. All right, good. I like that. I like that. Okay, that's that's how we're going to do it. So player, and then this has a constructor, uh, which gets an X and Y, and I will store it in the position variable. This that pause will be uh, X and Y. Let's just do this to be more clear for people coming in later, but we'll have an object pause that will have X and Y. I guess we could even say this at pause at X, this at pause at Y. I think both should work. And a method to move the player. So yes, see, they apparently already uh, kind of guessed what I want to do, which is pretty smart, but let me see. I want to update instead. I have an update function and I want to pass in the X and Y. Or let's call it new X, new Y. And then here, this that pause, that X will be new X. And this that pause, that Y will be new Y. This should work, right? Sure, you can send it. Okay. And then draw. Uh, draw context. We give it the contract context. Apparently, yeah. In P five JS, I didn't need to do that. But okay. And here we'll just do draw circle with this dot pause dot x. This dot pause dot y. Uh, player size will have a, a variable player size. Although, yeah, we don't need to do context because draw circle already has the context. All right, I just need, okay, I need a const player size will be, I don't know, 100, maybe. All right, good. So now uh, we'll get rid of this. Events, okay, okay, game loop, game stuff, I guess, uh, init stuff. And then this will be game stuff. And here we're going to create the player. Uh, player will be new player. And its X will be window dot inner height divided by two. And window. Wait, uh, this is window dot inner height divided by two, and the other one is in inner width. Width. Okay, good. So we have the player. Then we draw the canvas, and I guess here in the canvas we also can or draw game. Let's call it draw game. And here we can also do player.draw. So we can draw the player. Okay. Uh, can it expire before initialization? Okie dokie. So I guess. Where is it trying to access player before initialization? 46. But we initialize it here. What's wrong with you? Oh, game loop. Okay, okay, okay. I get it. So we initialize the player and then we call the game loop. Okay, good. So look at that. Player is here. And this should uh, be redrawn every time. Right? Uh, probably player size. Let's store this as well. Yeah, size. And I can say this that size is size. And here we can use this that size. And I'll move this to here. Okay. Let's make it smaller.
Okay, good. Now, this is a good one. Let's see if we can move it. So if we press E that key, we press W, we would like player that uh, not draw update. Let's see. Update, it's the new X and the new Y. Okay. new x would be so if you press up the new x will the x will stay the same but will change the y so new y will be uh player dot pause dot y minus one and then player dot update we want new new y and x will be this dot sorry player dot pause dot x we're not changing the x we're changing the y maybe i need four other functions to make it simpler but yeah let's see let's look at that <laughs> it moves slow motion uh okay Uh, so minus one is not good enough. Maybe hmm, minus five. It's kind of laggy. Hmm. He press key down. Hmm. Definitely not doing something right. Uh, let's do down as well. So this will be S. And on S, we're going to do plus. Uh, so for matching scaling for different screen sizes, what if you made the canvas huge but center the circle on the screen so the, their screen moves? over the canvas yeah that that's what we'll have to do <laughs> so by the way yeah you're right all of these things we wrote <laughs> we'll have to rewrite them because it won't work with uh well with the idea we have for a project okay so Player update should take dx dy so you don't mess with player pause directly. Yeah. Or what if we have four methods in player? Player move up, player move down, and all that, and it will know to do those. Player move down. Uh, and let's do two more. So if a player move left. I move right for D. Should you use velocity in the update function for smoother movement? Probably, but how was that done? Okay, let's uh, have these functions. Move up will be this that pause dot y. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, this that speed will be five. But this, uh, yeah, good. Then move down, move left, move right. Plus equals move left will be X and move right 
will be x plus equal. Okay, let's see. It's very laggy. New x is speed times velocity. So it's not smooth at all. And what's velocity like? Uh, but that's, isn't it? You can apply an animation, it's simpler. How is that simpler? I don't know how to do that. Yeah, it's very slow. It's not smooth at all. And it, it can go diagonally. Hey, at least we have movement. So, you say new x is speed times velocity. But now the new the new x could not be. It has to do something with the old x. Right? Or you mean here times... 0 0.8 or something. But that's like multiplying, uh, that's like subtracting. Instead of 5, you subtract 4 or something. Yeah, not, not smooth at all. Something is wrong. Let's see. Uh, da -da 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 -da. How do I add uh, e-pressed events to make the movement of player in the canvas very smooth? Let's see what GPT says. Um, minimum minus one or intermediate values. Maximum one. To make the movement of the player smooth in response to key press events in a canvas based game, you should implement a system that tracks which keys are currently pressed and then updates the player's position accordingly. Oh, I like this. Like whenever you press it down, it will... Okay, I like that. I, I think that will make it faster. Because it will be dependent on the game loop, not on our uh, e press. Okay, I like this approach. And then, yeah, I, I really like this approach. We're just setting the the key that's it, it's pressed. And then on on our uh, game loop somewhere. Yeah, an update function. If keys are up, player move. If keys are up, player move. Okay, other game logic. Okay. Ooh, normalize diagonal movement. Wow, what's that? This is some fancy physics stuff. To ensure the movement is smooth, use request animation frame for your game loop as it will sync your updates the browser repaints. Yeah, so I want to do that. So instead of doing all of this, uh, I'll remove it. Although, yeah, I kind of want to keep this. And we'll have an update function. Update game. And here, update game. Here we'll do that check as they do here. So if it stores the key somewhere, yeah. Well, let's do that as well, where we have do 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 keys. Okay. So if yeah, let me copy this as well. We're going to borrow it. Uh, and I want 
W S left right and here we'll do our functions although this function kind of seems a bit more intuitive because it just updates the position we don't have to have four functions we just have one but then we can't set the f <laughs> although I think we can get the speed so we could say player.speed minus player.speed we say player.speed like that this will be minus player.speed and this will be player that speed okay and we don't need those but we'll need to have the move so the move will be getting uh, x and y and we'll just set it oops x x Okay, and we have the speed, which will be super fast. All right, let's see. Whoa! <laughs> Something's wrong. Uh, we're not setting to the new X. <laughs> we're adding this dot pause dot X plus new X. Or plus, this is not new X, this is direction. Their X, their Y. Or I guess we could just say plus equals, plus equals, there. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. So that's a good start, but we're also setting it to zero. Yeah, that should work. Player move. We're adding their X, their Y. Is that okay? I messed up the function, uh, which I shouldn't. So update. I don't need the update function though. Do I need it? Update the game. Where where I'm using it? I'm a mess today. So we want to move, and here we want to use their X and their Y and then update will well we don't need this okay I'll, I'll, I'll figure out at some point so draw game player draw uh, draw circle events and then here player move okay so that should be Wow, oh my god. Wow. Wow, this is so smooth. Look at that. Compared to what we and it's also like super responsive. Wow. <laughs> I'm like a kid now. OMG it is cool so yeah wow and it, it also worked wow <laughs> other smoke uh yeah this feeling right here is why we're coders oh my god look at the, the smoothest butter wow OMG, this is cool. I can just press it all day long. Thank you, GPT. Yeah. <laughs> now give it guns. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy, this took a while, but. Wow. Uh, borders. Yeah, we have border. Ooh. Right now we won't focus on the borders because we should like stop it. You see, it kind of goes bye bye, bye bye. Uh, but yeah, we won't we won't focus on that.
So anyway, I started blast. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I, I, I just can't have enough of this. And the cool part of this method is that uh, we check for all the keys. So if we press two keys at the same time, it it knows to go that. Wow. Okay. So what happens if I player speed? Okay. Yeah. So we have the speed and that's perfect. Adjusted needed delta time. What's that? Adjust the movement speed. You might want to adjust the movement speed of the player. You can do this by multiplying the movement amount by its fact speed factor by and consider the delta time for frame rate independence. Huh? I don't know what that means. So, uh, player speed. What? So player move. Dx times player speed times delta time. What's delta time? What's delta time? I don't know what's del what's delta time. Does it say? You can do this by multiplying the movement amount by a speed factor and considering the delta time for frame rate independence. I don't know what's that. <laughs> yeah, that could be cool. I I'm not sure. Can I use the Twitter API to do that? Because it's super annoying. But yeah. Wow. So uh, probably uh, normalized diagonal movement. I'm not sure what that does as well. But probably it needs this at some point to make it even smoother. Right? But oh well. I'm happy with this. Uh. Okay. Now, can I shoot bullets? Let's see. I just say I want to shoot bullets in mouse direction. <laughs> Shooting bullets in the direction of the mouse and canvas base involves a few steps. Detecting mouse position, calculating the direction from the player to the mouse, creating bullet objects and updating their positions. Here's the guide. All right, sure. I'll, I like that. Okay, okay. We'll let it. Wow. Does a lot of stuff. What's Matt? Oh, okay, okay. This is probably the things to get the angle. And that, <laughs> I don't know what that's. <laughs> but I'm going to get inspired by this code. That's more of like saying I'm going to copy it. But not before I understand at least parts, partly how it works. Okay, good. So we have a bunch of code. Let's see. So take the mouse positions. All right, I know how to do that probably. Canvas, move, and then get. Yeah, it kind of gets the mouse inside the canvas, but in our case, the canvas is the window width. So you don't necessarily need to do this. You can just do either client X, I believe. But probably it's best to do that to make sure that so basically you do this whenever uh, there's an element inside and it's like move to the left to the right inside the, like this one. Let's imagine this box and you want to see how many pixels from this edge you are. If you do E dot client X, you get the entire distance from the edge of the browser. But if you do, then you subtract the rectangular left positioning, you get exactly how much. So yeah. Ebenezer, hi, Muhammad. Muhammad, hello. Okay, now let's see. Define a class for bullets, which indicates the properties for position, speed, and direction. So that's my only, like, not only. That's part of the things I don't know, like the angle and stuff. So the bullet, we have the X and Y. We already know how to do that with the speed, the angle. And then the DX and DY will be cosinus of the angle and sinus of the angle. 
And then in update, we, well, we kind of add the X and the Y because the bullet will continue to move, right? Okay. And when then we draw it. Okay. This, we know how to draw a circle. Okay. Create bullets on mouse click. So whenever we click, this is the mat part. I don't know. So angle. Mat that tangent e of client x minus right. But why does it do this again? Aren't we storing the mouse x and y? Why 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 does it do that again? And where is the rec? Huh? It, GPT maybe not too good. Okay. So this is how it calculates the angle. Okay. So e dot client y top player y. E dot client x left and player x. Okay, because in our case the x is in the middle, so that will work. And then it creates a new bullet and it pushes to the, the bullets uh, array. And then for each bullet, we update it and then uh, we draw it. Okay. And the bullet lifestyle. Op optionally, you can add logic to remove bullets after they travel a certain distance or go off screen to optimize performance. You can modify the speed and calculations. Ensure the player class exists. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do the bullet, bullet stuff, class bullet. Actually, let's just get inspired by this code like this. I'm super inspired, uh, but I want to keep the idea of position to be, I don't know. I just like that. Don't ask me why. Uh, the speed, sure. We have the angle and the x, the y. All right. And then we update. This will kind of. Hmm. Yeah. All right. And this we can say draw circle. Uh, this dot pause dot x this that pause that y and probably do we have a uh, player size yeah we need bullet size as well or we can just add it in the constructor <laughs> yeah easy Okay, good. And we do this that size. All right. And we don't need this because we already have a draw circle. Okay, we can sort of like um, have another color for the bullets. But for now, they should be good. All right. So we have that. Uh. Mm, we don't initialize a bullet unless we click on the canvas. Okay. So events. I guess we can do window dot click. Oh, uh, sorry. Add event listener. Click. And here. Okay. So we get that e dot y player dot y. <laughs> Okay, yeah, because the player is there. He's making malware. Where? Okay, so angle will be mat at a ten. I don't know the mat here. I'm just going to trust that this is good. Find i minus player pause dot y. This is. Hmm. Why does it take the Y first and then X? Oh, 
Okay. And then we create a bullet, new bullet, which will be player X, player Y. Okay. And then good. And the size. Okay. Player that pause that X player that pause that Y uh, angle, which we created and bullet size and then bullets that push bullet. Okay. So we need a couple things. We need bullets, which is an array. And we need a bullet size, which will be five. Probably it will travel fast, but okay. Well, 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 be that. And now in the draw function, uh, okay. Yeah. We need to also update the bullet and the draw game. So bullets for each bullet that update and here bullets for each bullet bullet dot uh, draw we have that right okay good so I think that should work if this math is correct tangent either client I don't know why we need to do that, but okay. All right, something not working. Definitely, I messed up something. No. Okay, we know an event listener click console dot log click kick chick. Okay, chick is working. So then. Let's console that log bullets. Bullet, two bullets, three bullets, four bullets. All right. Angle DX, DY position. Size speed X. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I messed up something here. Yeah. Update. Is that pause that X? Is that pause that Y? Because, well, I changed that. Wow, look at that. Woo! <laughs> okay. We'll also have to, maybe we have a lifespan for, um, for the bullet. Let's. thinking because we'll have to remove it <laughs> uh I'm thinking maybe we keep it for, I don't know, five seconds or we could also figure out if the bullet is out of the window. I kind of like this idea of having it be uh, for a fixed time because that way you could shot someone, you could see a bullet coming towards you and it might not hit you because the bullet expires. And maybe we can have uh, a color based on the bullets, the bullets, bullet life, lifetime, lifespan, something, something. But yeah, like that. It's so fun. And it works, look. It hits my mouse exactly. Wow. That's that's cool math. And see so you can Yeah, we kinda have to figure out <laughs> Because I can travel faster than my bullets. <laughs> uh 
Shot like this. No, nobody will ex. Uh... <laughs> so fun. Wow. It's fun building games as a developer. But yeah, we'll have to figure out how to make the bullet like go out of. The wreck that top. What wrecked? <laughs> How could I make it so that the bullet comes out of the player, not in the circle of it, but like... Hmm. E that client X, so that's the mouse where we click it. Minus reg that top minus player that x. What's reg that top? That's my, my question. Let's see. What is reg that top in the canvas click event? I have to build games for my clients so they play games and win prizes. I had to rebuild Candy Crush one time. I almost died. Wow, Candy Crush. My wife is almost at level 10,000 on Candy Crush. She's been playing for, I think over 10, eight years for sure, or over eight years. Oh yeah, crazy. Okay, let's see, what did ChatGPT say here? I don't understand what the rack top. Yeah, it's crazy. So she's not playing games, only one game, and that's Candy Crush, and she's been playing for so long. She's always playing when watch watches a movie and stuff. It just turns it on and plays Candy Crush. Okay, so let's see. In the context of the canvas click, rack top refers to the top edges distance in the pixels from the top edge of the viewport. Yeah, so yeah, I don't I don't have that because we're right where we want to be. So we don't need that. Uh, okay. Let's, let, let's just ask GPT because we're fancy developers now. We realize we don't know stuff. So we had GPT do it for us. Um, I want to add lifespan to bullets. Maybe after uh, a certain distance they traveled. Add the distance traveled property. Lifespan, okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. That sounds complex. I, I, I would have done it easier. <laughs> okay. Okay, I, I like this approach. So yeah, basically we have distance traveled and the lifespan, which is 300. Uh, I, I don't know. I would probably just use a constant and then increment whenever the update function runs and increment it. And if uh, that maximum lifespan is, if the current lifespan is, yeah, let's do that. You'll understand what I mean in a second. So we'll do lifespan is zero. And then on update, we do this dot lifespan plus plus. Uh, and then, yeah, I like this kind of is expired kind of function. And this will return a bullet, bullets, lifespan, uh, this that lifespan less greater than bullets lifespan. So if it's greater than it's expired and we'll, we're going to kill it. And then in the update, yeah. 
we filter it out. All right, that's uh, easier than I I had in mind. So glad I I did that. So we could do bullets, but okay. Bullets filter bullet is not expired. Bullet is expired. And we'll have to convert bullets to be a let here. And const bullets lifespan will be a hundred. And I think I'm going to need to move this in another file, probably. Okay, so see now they're kind of going, they're not going too far. I like that. And we have no errors, so that's good. Whoops. Okay, good. So we can do that and we can shoot. But we can't shoot too far. Maybe 100 is too small. Uh, let's make it 200. No errors, this stream is rigged. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I honestly thought there would be errors because we have the bullets lifespan here and we're using it here, but I guess we're not using expired. I don't know. Things. Now, the there's a trick because I'm kind of faster than my bullets. So let's do player speed five and then uh, bullet speed 10 uh, move this here move this here like this give it okay and speed 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 whenever we go new player this speed will be player speed and this speed will be bullet speed i guess bullets can be just bullet lifespan okay so now the bullet is way faster choo, 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 and it travels more so we can go back to 100 because it travels twice as fast okay so you could probably shoot let's see so probably if i come here okay nice like that hard mode friendly fire you can get killed by your own bullet <laughs> yeah uh and what i can do now this is going to complicate my life a bit but uh Hold on a second here. Uh, so for the bullet, no, for the player, don't have con. Do I have contacts that uh, fill file will be white, and then context fill style will be red. The bullets are red. <laughs> I probably did, it, did that at some point. See how fancy this that? Wow, look at that. So I, I keep shooting. The bullets kind of go like in a sine wave. Like that. I really like that. So, uh, <laughs> get bullet color, and this will be this li lifespan. Uh, I guess I can make it here. This said get bullet color. Get bullet color 
will be a function and uh, if lifespan less than 100 return white else I, I probably we could have some kind of a uh, other function but yeah for now lifespan less than 200 return yellow and else return red so I kind of oops no you don't want that damn you why oh, you don't want that so fill style get blur color this that lifespan oh I guess yeah I don't need to pass this Return white, yellow, red. So what's uh, not to do? I'm doing white somewhere else. You need to use lifespan. But I'm... Uh, by the way. Okay. So see, I messed up somewhere. Bullet lifespan is not defined. It's bullet to D. <laughs> okay. I'm using lifespan. Why it's not? Okay. See, it kind of gets yellow before dying. <laughs> okay. So, oh, bullet is a hundred. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. We could do less than bullet lifespan divided by three. And so basically a quarter and then bullet lifespan divided by T times two. Let's see. Yeah, see? Kind of morph into yellow, red and dying. <laughs> I like that. They should like morph more nicely. <laughs> Can you make some more mistakes so I feel better about my code? <laughs> this is like plenty mistakes, I guess. Okay. So we have this. And maybe we can make it so that if you, you have a... Oh boy. This can get so complex. But we can make it so that if you get hit by a red bullet, uh, you, you lose more health than by getting hit by a white bullet. Or I guess, no, the other way around. Now we just have to figure out like how do we attrib attribute the bullet to the player? How do we add, add other players? How do we have like a life for a player? I don't know. There's so many things we could do. And it's so fun to shoot around. I don't know. It's amazing. By the way, uh, let me go to GitHub. A new repository. Let's call this I shoot circles. And let me upload this so that you can play with it as well. Uh ooh. Uh, and I said empty git repository, okay. Okay, yeah, I, I shouldn't have a git repository in the client. How, how do I remove that? Client does not have a commit checked out. Fatal adding files failed. Uh, how do I remove, remove git? I guess I could do R, uh, rmrf git. Get status. Uh, CD back. Get status. Okay. Get add. Okay. That worked. For some reason, I don't know why. <laughs> Good morning, Chris. How are you? Uh, so, git add, git comment in it. And then we do git branch. 
git add origin and git push. Okay. Make a firecracker game. Uh, who? I don't know. Hey, Claudio, how are you? Yeah, you're right. It's best when things just work. All right. So this is the front end of the game. Like if you want to get the code, just go to github.com slash florinpop17. I shoot circles. I don't know why I call it like that. But yeah, and you can play too. This is fun. <laughs> Coding is fun, especially when it works. <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. But do you realize that uh, if you want to make this multiplayer, we'll have to kind of send all of these things through the server and then back to the other client we have to have detection and all of the fun stuff. You realize that, right? <laughs> uh, so this is a scrolling viewport as you wanted? No. Yeah, we also need to do that. Thank you, Chris, for reminding me. Thank you for saying hi before you're going for a run. How how long are you running today? I went for a run yesterday, 10 kilometers. And today I'm going to play football. So no run today. Uh, web RTC would be better than this. Better for this, I think. Lower latency than web sockets. Ooh. Uh, yeah, but I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I'm using Twitch chat. What's the other one? I stream on YouTube and Twitch as well. Uh, thank you for the follow, Berna. I didn't. Hmm, I didn't hear the notifications. Uh, Berna and also Dark Rager. Thank you. All right. How much time it take to create? What? Yeah, it will be fun to see with WebSockets. Honestly, I don't know. I guess. Yeah, I guess I'm going to. Uh, I don't even know. Like with WebSockets, I'll have to pass in the from the client to the server. The position and then from the server to all of the clients all of the positions plus the bullets so Ooh. that's gonna be fun thank you for following hooligan i like this so much she's so smooth <laughs> and yeah we also need to figure out how to make like a big uh, a bigger world because yeah, we need to we kind of need to have a fixed world somehow, and we don't. I think we won't move the player, but we'll move the world instead. So the player will always be in the middle, and as it moves, the world moves. I think only the primitive characters should be passed between client and server, not every position. I don't know. <laughs> I'll be honest. I don't know. <laughs> but I mean, like, yeah, maybe something like, okay, it moves to the left. Sure, hooligan, whatever helps. 
I hope you're okay. Uh, so Stan says, instead of sending all the bullets locations, you could send the coordinates of the combined bullet pounding box. Not all clients must have the same UI, but they must see roughly the same hit area. Yeah, I, I agree 100% with you, but I don't know how to do that. <laughs> That's the big problem. I guess I could use GPT to help me with that. Yeah, so basically what you're saying is that especially if we have a, a big world, right? You only see a part of it and you only need to see that part. So yeah, there must be a pattern for something like this. It's a known dev, game dev. Yeah, that, you're right. Ditch. Ditch. <laughs> I agree. I totally agree. But yeah. Also, I think the fact that the bullets come, so I kind of, the bullets come from the middle. I need to figure out if these are my bullets or not and don't let them kill me. I really like how this goes. <laughs> very, very fun. All right. Uh, I'll go to the bathroom for a tiny bit. Uh, because I had too much water and yeah, we'll, we'll see what we can do next. <clears throat> Any tips if you had bad anxiety? Oof. With stream? Do you mean anxiety with streaming or? A friendly fire is on. Yeah, I mean, could be <laughs> on, but the bullets travel faster than you. So unless like right now, the, if friendly fire was on, you would be instantly dead because yeah. Uh, so do you choose the direction where you shot at most? Yes. Yeah, so it shots on the mouse direction on the mouse. As you can see, All right, thanks. Thanks, buddy. Go say I said hi. All right, I'll go to the bathroom for a minute and uh, we'll continue to see what we can do next because there are still many things to do. Alrighty, we're back here. Let's see. Do I get any messages? 
Just give me a second. Okay. Welcome to the chat. Uh, okay. Yeah, by the way, I'm almost hungry. So we should order something. <laughs> Everyone say hi in the chat for my wife. She's here. She's watching. Probably sneaking around. Uh, yeah, so Chris asks, um, I'm usually using chat GPT to help on coding. What's a good alternative? I honestly... I also use GPT. I also have the four, so yeah. So this is what we built: a circle moving around, shooting things. But we need to figure out more things. It's going to be tricky. With uh, yeah, basically, what we want to do. We want to translate everything based on... Hmm. Yeah, I don't know how to do that, so that's SGPT. Uh, right now, the player is moving around the screen, aka the world. How can I make it so that the world moves around and the player stays in the middle while also making sure the bullets still move now that's going to be fun. uh github copilot is another alternative yeah i've heard of good things about it i and i haven't used it yes he has something better than copilot oh i haven't heard it okay so to create the effect of war moving around the player, while the player stays in the center, you need to adjust the rendering logic. Instead of moving, moving the player, you move the world, other objects, background, etc. In the opposite direction of the player's intended movement. So yeah, basically if we want to move to the left, we move the world to the right. Okay. The player will remain in a fixed position on the canvas, typically at the center. For the bullets, you'll need to consider the position relative to the world movement. This is going to be uh, tricky. Okay, let's see. Keep the player centered. Set the player's position to the center of the canvas and don't change it when moving. <laughs> yes, yeah, Stan says, uh, speaking about the, uh, the bullet's position. Instead of sending every bullet position every every frame, you can send less frequent updates and use prediction algorithms on the client side to simulate the bullet's movements. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> that should that should be how it should work. Well, I guess like <clears throat> if you know where the players are and if you know the initial position of the bullet and you know the direction, you could kind of simulate, but yeah, that's some some very complicated algorithm, which I don't know how to do. So for now, I think I'll just be happy with sending everything for now. Okay, so set the uh, player's position in the center of canvas. Yeah, GPT is pretty good. Uh, Canvas width, height, and the player is in set. So we have the player in the center initially, but that's not the problem. Uh, when handling movement, 
move all other elements, background, enemies, in the opposite direction of the intended player movement. Move each word element in the opposite direction. For example, if you have an array of enemies, okay, and bullets as well. If you have a field background or other world elements, move them too. Adjust bullet creation and movement. So I do that. Okay. Update the game loop. But this is the same. Render everything relative to the player. So uh, we clear the rect, the rectangular. Uh, okay. We draw the player and we draw the enemies and bullets. So yeah, I don't see. Hmm. I, <laughs> yeah, I guess I should start rendering the world. And stop moving the... Hmm, I don't know. Move forward. Okay, zero player speed. Move the world based on key input events of the player. But we don't have the world. Oh, I understand. Okay. Okay, okay. So, we let the bullets do their thing, but... Yeah, okay, I like this. So, instead of uh, doing player move, we do move the world. And... We also update the bullets because if the bullet is going to the left, but you go to the right, then the bullet, well, and if you stay in the center of the screen, then the bullet travels to the left even faster. Ooh, okay. Okay, okay, good. So... Yeah, I guess I can let... No, I don't need the move of the player anymore. The player will be in the center of the screen. Okay. And I just move everything around. Okay. Hmm. Do, 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 do. So let me do this. Move world. We don't have enemies, but we do have the bullets. So we move the bullets by that direction. So if you have a tilt background, I don't know what the tilt background is. Okay, so we move the bullets because that's the only thing we have right now. And we move it by that direction. So then we don't move the world, we move the bullet. Uh, well, not, not, sorry, not move the player, but we move the world, and in this case, the bullet. With the player's speed. Yeah. Let's see. So, it shouldn't... Yeah, it's... It doesn't look like I'm moving. Okay, move the bullets for each uh, bullet that... Uh, no, I don't want to use that. Do we have on the bullets a move? Update. No, okay. I'll have to do it that way, although I don't like that, but... Okay, so bullet.pause.x, bullet.pause.y. And now, yeah, see? 
Although it feels weird. Yeah, it, it works. See? This is me following the bullets. But if I go that way, woo! Okay. Okay, okay, okay. And I'll have to draw other elements on the screen. So let me do that. Let's have enemies. Enemies. And... Or let i, 0, i less than, and i plus plus, we'll, we'll create the enemies. Do, 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 do. Yeah, okay, okay. So we can create a const enemy, will be a new player with uh random weight random height position and the player size yeah that should work good 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 see loading is fun all right so window dot actually met that random times window dot inner width and then met that random times window dot inner height okay and we need to pass in the size as well what what do we have here uh size yeah let's make the the enemies smaller thank you for the follow star uh, a tilt background is a background composed of some tiles which are small bitmaps that are repetitive like mario for example you encode background with the arrays of characters okay and some fancy stuff. All right, so let's make the enemy size half of the player size. Player size divided by two. And uh, yeah, we add it to enemies. Enemy, enemy. Needs that push. Enemy. All right, so we position them randomly on the screen. And then, of course, we have to draw them. So we, we're not updating, we don't need to update, but we need to draw. So here, where we don't draw the bullets, we also draw the enemies. This is enemy. The draw. Okay, and when we move the world, we also move the enemies. So that should give us the feeling of... Uh, enemy... Do, do, do. New player, position, move. Yeah, I guess we they can move randomly if they want to. Okay, I'll, I'll just leave that. All right, let's see what I messed up. Enemies is not defined. Why? What's wrong? Some typo. Enemies. Enemies. <laughs> Enemies. All right. Look at that. And now, wow, see? This is so, so fun. Like that. So we have enemies on the screen, and you can choo 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 choo. And the world is moving, so you're always in the center. How cool is this? Choo 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 choo. <laughs> okay, I like that. You know, you you know what I'm going to do next, right? <laughs> I'm going to figure out how I can detect if a bullet hits an enemy and kill it. <laughs> uh. How do I detect when a bullet hits an enemy and uh, kill it? <laughs> That's some, some kind of a, yeah, harsh thing. Oh, 
Okay, that's pretty much what I wanted. Enemies for each enemy. If is colliding, enemy supplies. Bullet is expired. Ooh, it also does that. Yeah. This is a lot of fun indeed. Okay. Uh we also need to set the is expired. Or I guess I can set the lifespan. But okay, I need the is colliding. That that's pretty much what I didn't know how to write. But I'll use the other thing as well. Uh draw. I have everything here. Let's just say this. Game logistics. Okay. So yeah, let's see. So basically we get the the distance between the two and then we do the square root of Yeah, so this is a uh, Pythagorean theorem, right? Right? I think so. And if distance is less than the radius, ooh, I also need the radius. And this should be uh, Oops, go back, go back, go back, go back. This will be that pause, pause, that pause. That pause. Pause that. Pause that. Okay. Good. Okay. So we have colliding. Now we need to get. Uh, so for the bullets, we get the bullet color is expired. Yes, we can set it this here. Is expired. Uh, false and then we increase the lifespan and if whoops if this dot lifespan is greater than bullet lifespan then we set is expired to be true and then we don't need this anymore next we need to figure out where we use that the is expired uh well, I guess we can just call it this. And that's it. This should work. We should still see the bullets expire. Let me follow you. Ah, okay, good. All right. And so now that we have that, uh, how was it? We need to loop over the enemies. No, for over the bullets Ooh, okay let's see so where is the update of the game uh let me clean it up a bit because i know what those do let's keep the code a bit a bit more simpler all right so bullets for each bullet we want to do multiple things okay so we want to update the bullet and we also need to detect if, well, we're colliding. Okay. And we filter, but I guess this... Can we do it? No, no, no. I mean, I, we could sort of do it here, but we'll mess up the four. So, yeah. Let's just get inspired by this code. Handle collision. So bullet and enemy, uh, we splice the enemy, okay, and then bullet is expired, true, okay, yeah, that seems about right, so let's see, boop, boop, okay, uh, die, doesn't die, I'm back, we are killing circles yet, yeah, soon, uh, something, something is not working. We need to figure out what. No errors in the console, so... So what? What, 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 what happened? So enemies for each enemy. If it's colliding, the bullet is colliding with the enemy. Then the enemy will splice it. 
Okay, so we remove the enemy. And the bullet is expired. That seems about right. Probably here. So circle pause X minus circle pause X, circle pause Y minus circle pause Y. Distance is that. Uh, I think this. Uh, radius. I uh, don't think we have radius. We have size. Okay. Ooh, size. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. We're killing everyone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's cool. Uh, uh, let let me do something else. So we create. Uh, create enemy. Like that. We create the function to create the enemy. And then game stuff let's see update game blah 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 function create enemy we'll do that okay and now after we kill it we can uh, create enemy so we add well actually wait 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 this we also need this in the create enemy and we push const new what 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 am I doing? New enemy, new player. Okay, const enemy new player. Then here we create enemy, and that's it. Okay, good. So now we kill it. Boom, and then doo -doo 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 -doo, and people just appear. Rah! It is fun. Okay, uh, can we like set the color of the enemy? DTX fill style to be blue. No, 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 okay. Why is that? Because we probably set it here, yeah. Uh, I'm thinking. We would need to remove this from here and only... Or I guess we could say enemy here initially is false. And this dot enemy enemy and this will be enemy uh blue otherwise white okay I messed something up isn't it how that should work enemy is not fine no it this is like is enemy okay this dot is enemy. This dot, this dot, this dot. All right. And when we create it, uh, da -da -da. we just say uh, true. Ha ha ha. Look at all those ugly bastards. Ha 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 ha. They all gonna die. Okay, good. That's cool. Now, uh, how cool is it to, to like build something like this? Just move around and you, you do stuff and kill stuff. Now imagine all of them shooting back at you. <laughs> that will be fun. Okay. Let's see. So we have... We kind of... We have our uh, canvas weight and stuff. I guess, can it, 
Wow, I can go as long as I want. Huh. Okay. I like that zooming. But I don't know how to draw that. Like, we might have. <clears throat> Hey, just join. Is the camera movement just to translate? Uh, well, basically, we're keeping the, the player in the middle all the time. And then when we move, let me show you. So here, when we update the game and we move by pressing the keys, W, blah, 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 uh, we move the world. So here, basically, we're instead of moving the player, we move everything in the canvas. So we move the bullets and we move the enemies based on depending on which direction. So if we press in the left, we basically move the bullets and the enemies to the right. So that's how you kind of have this bum, 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 thick, tricky part where you can move around, you know? Yeah, adding an offset to everything. Well, this was done thanks to my good friend GPT. Uh, but hey, we learned something. So I guess that's cool. The only, so I want to turn this into a multiplayer game. That still like, yeah. We still need a few things to, not just a few, but many. <laughs> then how would you move the player on others player map? So I guess the same thing. Uh, yeah. Okay. So one question at a time. How would you move the player on other players map? Uh. The player will be like the enemies here. I guess on the enemy we could, let's see, uh, move world, blah, blah, blah. Where is the player enemies for each draw? I could, I think, uh, do something like, how, we have the move. So yeah, we have direction. Okay. So we could, where is it? Okay, here before we draw, we could potentially do enemy dot move, and how would I determine? I need minus one, zero, one, the three values. Uh, I, oh yeah, let me think. So we need mad dot floor, and we need a number mad at random between. Yeah, just that. Met that floor, met the random. No, floor, this will be minus one and zero. I guess times two, and then minus one. And we need this twice for left and right. So then they're gonna jiggle like this. Uh, apparently, just jiggle in that part. So just that. I want them to jiggle randomly. But yeah, I'm kind of moving now. So then. <laughs> but yeah, I need to figure out mad dot. Not seal, man. Or I guess I could just use mad the random times two minus one. And then. Yeah, they'll jiggle around. Okay, yeah. Oh, and choo 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 choo. Uh, or I could. I could do times. Eight minus four. And they do. <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah. And if the player spawns, how to determine where? Just random. Yeah. We'll have to figure out where to put the player. But yeah. It's, uh, they, they look like they're infested or something. <laughs> okay. But yeah, we could move them like this. Go back, go back, go back like this. Okay. So they jiggle, 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 jiggle. Now my only cons problem is that they won't span. Oh, wow. They will. Okay. I kind of like this. So they will span. Hmm. But I still feel like I need a bigger world somehow to figure out, okay, I, I, you're a bigger world. Do, do, do. 
Random thought. Are the coordinates of the player based on the canvas size? Yes. It's always in the center. I can't stop playing this game. I should be coding it, not playing it. Of course we can add score and stuff. Ah! I think I'll probably leave the Socket.io part for tomorrow. Rocket, hello, how are you? So what uh, if I am on a 4K display full screen and you are like currently on my uh, X and Y will be different than yours? Uh, well, this is the thing, so... Let me see, but basically... I will, so that you will be like these enemies, right? But instead of having a random movement, I will be getting from the server if you go to the left, right, top and bottom, and I will be updating that, you know? Yeah, that, that should be easy. Uh, what I'm working on, I'm trying to build a multiplayer game where you shoot one another and stuff. <laughs> So I'm still learning how to do that in JavaScript, Canvas, and stuff like that. But yeah, basically that's it. So whenever someone joins, uh, I easy or easy, yeah. Whenever someone joins, I uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it looks like a Gario. But you you don't eat stuff; you shoot stuff. <laughs> Um, yeah, what I was once say, yeah, so when someone joins, we position them randomly in the canvas. Hmm, but that's the trick. So I still need to have a big viewport, a fixed big viewport, let's say 4000 by 4000 pixels. I position myself in the middle of the viewport, but then my coordinates will be random to the other players. Right? And then when I move to the left, in my case, the browser will move the other way, but I will send my new positions to the other players. And in their view, there will be like these enemies that they're moving. See? So fun. <laughs> it's pretty impressive going from Googling how to draw a circle to this. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I mean, in my defense, I kind of might might have done this in the past, more or less. In uh, I did it in P5GS. But yeah, I still... The math is not my uh, strong suit. So yeah, yeah, see, like this enemy. We shouldn't bump into... If a player goes a little far from the start, enemies are not visible and also add some things like when they kill blast the enemy. Yeah, Easy, easier said than done. But that will be it, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I usually code stuff that I'm, like I have this random idea and I try to build it. So, we'll see. Thank you, Ghost, for following. Appreciate it. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, I guess... But then... I Do you remember we did this part in the beginning with the canvas and stuff? Uh, We might need to figure out like a world size. Uh, don't worry, Rocket. Ghost, da, sunt român. Salut. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm not sure I can code more. <laughs> I mean, I could. 
but I want to like kind of uh, figure out exactly what I want to do before moving forward. And probably I'm going to do the, not probably, I'll, I'll do the socket IO implementation with the multiplayer things um, tomorrow. <laughs> so I'll give you a reason to come back tomorrow, the same time. Well, actually two hours and 45 minutes sooner than this. That's when we started. Um, but yeah, that's what we need to do. We need to create a bigger world. Oh boy. Thinking. Yeah, that will be easy. So we create something like 4,000 by 4,000. Whenever someone joins, we store their position. That's going to be a tricky one. But we'll figure it out. We have ChatGPT to help. We also have a bunch of smart people in the chat to help. So, yeah. And then, my only concern, sort of, is like... For the user that's playing, I want it always to be in the same... In the center of the screen. But in the big picture... Is moving around. Right? So I need to update its position. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll figure it out. And then, of course, there is the part where... Oh... Uh, we send the bullets position and all that. That's going to be fun. Let me move this back to... Enemy draw. Okay, and I can uh, update this code to GitHub. Git comment. Added enemies. In case some of you want to get the code and, uh, well, do something with it. Uh, yeah, by the way, I'm also looking at... Let me see if I can find it. So Agario uh, coding train. So this one. And let's see. This is a three part series. And I think in part two and three. So in the first part, he creates the blobs and stuff. Uh, and then in the third part, yeah, Hello, welcome. networking, yeah, so he does this, so I guess uh, I'll look at this video and I'll figure out how he moves things around and then I'll try to do that as well. All right, good. Any questions, chat, if you have, let me know. Of course, we would need to kind of limit the number of bullets people can send, right? You can't allow 10 players to do like this because they'll, right, they'll kill everyone. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's going to be fun. Also, collision, de collision detection between players, they couldn't like kiss and stuff. But this is a... <laughs> I'm a monkey. All right. But that's it for today. Uh, we we really went from like not knowing how to draw a circle in a canvas to building this, uh, which is kind of uh, cool. <laughs> uh, thanks for people who helped. And also thanks for GPT. And until tomorrow, I hope you'll have a great day. See you then. Bye.